Now, the other week I brought you the story of the University of Queensland student who's going through hell trying to defend himself uh, against uh, action from his uni. Drew Pavluth, uh, tell us firstly, uh, in this legal battle you're having with the University of Queensland, last time we spoke we wondered whether or not you are able to have legal representation. You had Tony Morris QC offering to represent you for free. Has that been able to happen? Are you getting legal representation? They've actually tried to put him under a gag order. So he's, they're trying to make sure that Tony can't speak about the proceedings. Now, like, I think that just demonstrates to everyone just how, you know, corrupt, like, opaque these proceedings are. They're, they're an attempt, you know, to do me over behind the scenes, in the shadows. Me and my friend really wanted to make a documentary on Drew. Not only was he, and still is, getting a lot of media attention, uh, but he always comes across as pretty vain and he has a big superiority complex. When our government databases get hacked, what do we do? Our knee jerk reactions are pointing fingers at Russia and at China. When something happens to them, it's the same thing. They point them back to us, to the to US, to the UK. And the thing is that, as I said, when you look at the sequence of events and the pattern of things happening, from the Chinese point of view, they would say, look, all these things are happening right now at a time of geopolitical tension. Who stands to gain the most? What's the motivation? If you did a crime investigation, that's one of the things you look for. What's the motivation? Who gets maximum advantage out of, out of it? And they would actually look at the US. <clears throat> Drew Pavlou, we missed uh, some of your earlier question, but you were talking about there being violence within the demonstration that you were part of. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Randy. Look, I'm just very disappointed in the comments made by our people's panelists. I don't know who this nobody is. This footage that we have is shot somewhere around August 2019. And Drew wasn't quite as famous then as he is now. His focus at the time was actually very much on the protests in Hong Kong, before he got into a scandal with the University of Queensland and he's kind of spiralled down ever since. The event was called A Communist, Liberal and Reactionary Walk Into a Bar. Drew represented the Liberal. They were also joined by a monarchist, Wilson Gavin. Thread of destruction and of chaos, which seeks to undermine everything that grounds man. It is seeks to undermine the family, to undermine the church, to undermine the king and country, and belief in the inviolability and sacred nature thereof. So, what is our role? They all talked politics for a few hours, and students in the University of Queensland's political group made up their audience. Not long after we arrived, this guy came up to me and my friend. Hey. He asked if we were planning on filming, because the event wasn't going to be recorded to protect the identity of the panel members. I told him we were filming and he just kind of said okay, and then he left us alone. Liberalism 
The communist I find actually to be the most well-informed and well-articulated. He doesn't ramble at all and all his points are worded very well. Um, I have no idea where that spiel was going. Can I, can I uh, admit, Wilson Gavin, hammer of the mods to the stage. <laughs> well, there are no real lib cuts here tonight to offend with an acknowledgement of country, so I'll jump oh, right into you. it. Um, <laughs> liberalism <laughs> is an abomination. <laughs> liberalism is a monstrous abortion. Uh, it, it is a monstrous abortion A few months after this footage, Wilson protested an event in Brisbane City. It was a book reading by uh, drag queens to a group of young kids at a local library. Wilson went there with a megaphone and uh, basically displayed his distaste for what was going on. The event went somewhat viral within Australia that night and people online really weren't kind to Wilson for it. He had a lot of abuse thrown at him on Twitter and uh, students and local politicians thought he was out of line going to an event and yelling at children in a public library. And Wilson actually committed suicide the morning after. ...of liberalism, of republicanism, of d democratism, uh, of communism, of socialism and all the other nasties that have emerged over the last 300 years. <laughs> in short, they are Whigs. Uh, liberalism has been insidious over the last 300 years. And I think it would be remiss not to note the vast Masonic conspiracy that has grounded itself, and you know, one can scoff. I'll wait for you to sit before I go on, because I need to like compose my thoughts as well. I'm not falling, but... Speak from the heart. So, Ma Margaret, <laughs> but, but, but Margaret Thatcher's idea that there is no such thing as society, there, there are just families, and individuals, I think that's fundamentally incorrect. And that's what social liberalism tries to, I, I guess, address. It tries to harmonize the desire for freedom that is etched into every human heart with the good of the community. It acknowledges that we do, in fact, live in a society. And, and I think that is important. Um, <laughs> it, it's important because it's a fundamentally stronger understanding of what human nature is like, what human communal life is like, and that's why I'm going to be arguing to defend social liberalism, 
social liberal tradition today, because I think the sorts of political orders that Sebastian, oh, actually, Sebastian's not that bad. Well, like, <laughs> Drew kind of loses cool. His tone and delivery uh, turn from a stutter and he gets an impassioned yell. And uh, looking back at this footage, like a year after I took it, my perception of Drew is kind of better than what it was at the time. I can actually hear some urgency and passion in his voice. I just really don't think he's using the right platform to do it. They are. Because I think this tradition it rests on fundamentally an incorrect understanding of human freedom and human nature. And that's basically all the footage we shot at the event. Since this, Drew has been in headlines worldwide and his fame and popularity have only grown. Recently, the University of Queensland suspended Drew for two years. They filed a list of complaints. Amongst those were not only his anti-Chinese Communist Party protests, but complaints of bullying and harassment. At the time of my editing this footage, Drew has lodged an appeal with his lawyer and is suing UQ for 3.5 million. Whatever you find in this footage, I hope it resonates with you and your beliefs. As someone that is generally uninterested in politics, I find the mannerisms of these four a lot more interesting than what they're actually talking about. I don't think they're saying anything new or anything important at all, but their childlike taunts are a lot more uh, interesting to watch. But I do really feel that these students and the people that went there to watch the event as well have a lot to learn about the power of words and the seriousness of what they're talking about. I made this video to show the juvenile manner that they just throw insults at each other or talk about uh, these very serious issues that are going on in very serious countries, things like rape and murder and child poverty. Uh, I hope that Drew Pavlo is able to mature and use his very unique position for someone of his age to um, better humanity, I guess. Why Sunni ultra-radical, ultra-fundamentalist actors trying to push Orthodox Christianity and Shiism out of the region? Syria is ground zero for this. Syria is where we are seeing tens of thousands of fighters who have been radicalised from across the world, centering in on one specific regime. Uh, I don't really a of national sovereignty, but if you're going by the rules of the liberal-based order, 